Headliner, Funstrats Tom Lee. He joins us right now. Tom, thank you for being here. Great to see you, Frank, and everyone else. So, Tom, you have certainly been the bull on halftime. You've been the one tooting the horn that we're set up for a rally. Based on all the information that we have right now, do you still believe in that rally? I know, I, I know, a silly question. I know you do, but do you still <laughs> believe in that rally? And what data can you point to people who are skeptics uh, that they should kind of look at to also jump on the train that you're on? Uh, well, foremost, uh, I know there was some talk about inflation. I think there's more good news in the pipeline on inflation. Just gasoline alone will probably subtract almost 80 basis points from CPI month over month in August. So it's a, it's a bigger improvement. But the, the story there is things like leading indicators, alternative data, commodity prices, even surveys show that underlying inflation and leading indicators are far lower than hard data like CPI. So I think it's July was a break in trend that's caught a lot of people flat footed. And then if that's true, it does set us up a lot like August 82, which is the stock market bottomed in August 82, almost 10 weeks before Paul Volcker abandoned the anti-inflation fight. And that entire stock market rally of four months erased a three-year bear market. I just think the key here is if investors are bearish and offsides and skeptical and think that the hard data is driving this, 82 tells us that we could have a very steep stock market move. Similar to what Joe was talking about that, you know, 4350 might be a magnet, but I think the all time highs of this year will be realized before year end. Uh, Tom, by the way, your CNBC Pro Talk on CNBCPro.com, the highest rated ever, where you kind of break down your thesis for the second half rally. So, speaking of it, uh, you actually believe the rally is strengthening with a focus on lower quality. Exactly what do you mean by that? Uh, well, it's something we highlighted to our clients today that uh, Mark Newton, our head of technical strategy, says one of the nice things developing this week is there's been a breadth expansion. More stocks are participating and adding to, you know, advancing. When, when you have a breadth expansion, investors are going to shift away from quality and sort of the big cap leaders uh, and move towards lower quality. So we're, we were highlighting some lower margin names, companies with higher debt to capital, Highly, more highly shorted, but also technically attractive, and we and we had six stocks. And by the way, Frank, great to hear about the CNBC Pro. You were excellent. You were excellent, uh, Joe. I believe you have a question for Tom. I, I do, Tom. So I've been expecting a U-shaped recovery. I thought this would be different than a lot of the corrections we've witnessed since the Great Financial Crisis. It sounds like you think this is going to be a V-shaped recovery. Yeah. Speak a little bit about position and sentiment, and do you think that the market is prepared? for that type of fast V-shaped recovery? Uh, Joe, it's a great question. I think the thing that's keeping a lot of fundamental investors sidelines is they think companies have to cut earnings. And therefore, they're, they're fighting this and, and really saying only technicals are driving the rally. But one thing we have to keep in mind is that post-pandemic, companies survived a depression with good margin expansion. Now they've survived six months of almost hyperinflation and negative GDP with double digit earnings growth. These are fundamentally better businesses and I think their multiples re-rating. So it's very similar to 82. But again, I think that that's what's gonna drag investors in because if we emerge from this, as, as we point out, CPI weakening, and then China starts to improve, and of course, you know, it's, it's kind of positive that Xi's leaving the country, we could see a fundamental tailwind develop along with cash flowing in that would be a huge technical driver for all-time highs, and I think it could come very quickly. Brent, I believe you have a question as well. Yeah, hey, Tom. So, so here's what I'm thinking through, and, and I'd love to get your thoughts. So, you know, the Fed's balance sheet has actually increased, you know, a smidge since they started doing their small bits of, of quantitative tightening. It really starts in September in earnest when they're going to let $95 billion roll off per month. So what I'm thinking through is, number one, the Fed owns 30 percent of mortgages. So even remotely selling those into a rising rate environment to me is something to think through and that I don't feel great about. Second of all, oh, QE has been so stimulative to juice the economy. How can QT, the reverse of that, not also put a pressure on equities? Yeah, it's a fair question. Uh, the Fed's going to double its QT, um, so it's about $600 billion annualized beginning in September. Uh, we have to keep in mind the actively managed credit universe is $50 trillion of actively managed money. 
And we know almost every bond manager and every Wall Street firm has sold a Delta One product to hedge against QT. So I think of that 600 billion annualized, market positioning has already sold off a lot of products in anticipation of that. So I think the flow effect is far lower. In fact, it's not that different. We've written about in the past, equivalent to one of the large bond managers re rebalancing. So I don't think it's as seismic as people expect. But you're absolutely right. QT means this, the companies have to produce earnings to justify multiples. But the thing to watch will be the tenure. Because if the tenure stays at 28, that's a 37 PE for a 10 year bond, which is guaranteed to lose money. Whereas you can pay today 16 times for an equity that's growing earnings at 10%. Hey, Tom, it's Jimmy Labenthal. I'm going to jump in on what you and Bryn were just talking about, because uh, you're talking about flow of funds. And, you know, we talk about quantitative tightening as the removal of this incredible buying force, which it is. But nobody's talking about the fact that supply of treasuries in particular is going down. Um, you know, the budget deficit, it's still ugly, but I mean, there is dramatically less issuance from Treasury now than a year ago. Does that matter? Uh, that's a great point. You're, you're, you're spot on. In fact, JP Morgan annually does a great model that shows net supply, including corporate buyback and issuance and governments. And you're right. A big delta factor every year is how much financing the government needs to do. It will end up solving for where rates settle out. And again, if, if rates behave and even at 3233 that's a 33 pe for the bond market i just think the stock market at 16 times is still cheap all right tom lee from fundstrat we appreciate the insight as always and if people out there you should definitely check out his cnbc pro talk on cnbcpro.com all right straight ahead